Welcome in to the Nickel City Crew. I am your host, Rob Crippen. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Nickel City Crew. You can also find our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. I'm thankful you're choosing us for some of your Buffalo Bills and NFL content again today. This episode is presented by Crippen Legacy Entertainment here on Spreaker. And as always, these are my Bills thoughts said out loud. All right, let's get straight to it. I wanted to start tonight's episode by posing a question to you, Bills Mafia. If you have an opportunity on any of the platforms that you're listening to the podcast tonight, uh, please in the comments section leave your answers because I love interacting with all of you and the fans and, and now the crew, as I like to call you guys as well. What is the best Bills day that you've had as a fan of this team? I started thinking about this question on the drive back to Charlotte on Tuesday. One of the problems that you have with a 17-year playoff job is that there's not really much to choose from, quite frankly. There's a lot more days where you're embarrassed to be a Buffalo Bills fan than you are to be happy about it, let alone to even qualify as your best Bills day. I know if you would have asked me about a week ago, for sure, I would have told you New Year's Eve 2017. It's obviously week 17. The Bills go down to Miami. They take care of business, beat the Dolphins, I think 22-16. After the game, we became scoreboard watchers. We're watching it to see if we can get a miracle from Cincinnati over the Ravens. We get the miracle. Tyler Boyd gets that amazing pass from Andy Dalton, the Bills Mafia, myself included. We all flood Andy Dalton charity, and we're all donating $17 a piece. And it really kind of showed the heart of Bills Mafia, and it also showed what that day meant to us as fans. It showed that... It meant so much to us that we were willing to do anything we could to show our gratitude for how much of really a relief it was to actually just get back into the playoffs. The drought was like a, uh, it was like a thousand pound boulder on your chest as a Bills fan, something that you couldn't escape. It was always talked about. As I sit here tonight, my answer has definitely changed. Last Saturday night was the, my best <laughs> Bills day ever as a fan, without a doubt. I know there's a generation of Bills fans, and we talked about it last week in the episode, that also feel that way. We didn't even know what to expect coming into last week. We had a game on the line, playoffs, everything on the line against a division rival, our most hated rival, easily, a team that had lorded over us for 20 years, dominated us, kept us out of the playoffs, and we had an opportunity to exercise some demons. And boy, did we exercise those demons last Saturday night. I mean, what a what a, what a wonderful night it was. There's so many superlatives, there's so many adjectives you can use to describe last Saturday, and I don't even know if I can get them all out without stuttering all over myself, to be honest. Regardless if you went to the game or if you sat at home and stayed warm and watched it, doesn't matter. We all witnessed history last Saturday. I think I talked about in the episode last week how I firmly believe earlier this year against the Patriots in Foxborough was Josh Allen's best game as a Bill. He could put up a few games from last year, Denver or San Francisco. He threw a you know a bunch of great balls, a bunch of great stats. But I thought last the last game against the Patriots in Foxborough, I think it was week 15, week 16, it was his best performance with his legs, with his arm, that last drive, up five an opportunity to go ahead and extend the lead, bring it back to 12, and he was masterful. Until last Saturday night, that was his best game as a pro. This is Josh Allen's best game as a pro, hands down. This is actually history. They were talking about this could have been one of the best quarterback games in playoff history, in the history of regular season or playoff, period. They said 21 of 25, 308, five touchdowns, Yes, that's more touchdown passes than incompletions. I just rewatched the game last night on NFL Network, and those four incompletions, he could have completed all of them. He got bad luck on a tip pass on one of them, and the other three were just a little bit off. Seven for seven for the Bills offense. Seven for seven. Being at the game watching that happen, I really didn't believe what was happening half the night. No punts. No field goal attempts, no turnovers, no fourth downs. 
Hell, they didn't even have a third down longer than third and four, they said. No picks, no nothing, no turnover, no sacks. I think that was the fourth straight game that the offensive line didn't have any sacks allowed for Josh Allen. That might be a good sign for Sunday night, hopefully. Knock on wood. Everything was working, both sides of the ball for the Bills that night. I think the defense deserves a lot of credit. They don't get a lot of credit. I think they're still number one. Out of the last eight teams that are left, I think they're definitely number one. But I think DVOA had them right right up there, number one pass defense, their number one scoring defense. So they definitely got to still be the number one defense with the eight teams that are remaining. We kept scoring. I mean, it was the most amazing night that I've ever seen, that I've ever been a part of. We kept scoring. We never let our foot off the gas. Now, I do think that was intentional. And if it was intentional by Sean McDermott and his staff, then then hats off, man. I mean, be, I mean, honestly, hats off. I heard some people out of New England talking about we had bad class and the Bills didn't show class with the with the thick six to Tommy Doyle. I, who cares? 20 years. Who cares? I, I don't care. I don't care if we look classy doing it. I don't care if Bill Belichick had a problem with it. Apparently he didn't. They said on WGR this week that he went into the locker room and was talking to the guys and talking to McDermott and to Allen and, and giving them their kudos. I mean, how could you not? 47-17, 7 for 7. I couldn't I couldn't believe the score. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe every single time we got the ball we were scoring. And these weren't short drives either. These were long drives. Methodical with deep shots in between as well. Josh Allen was a surgeon. He was amazing. It was the most amazing night I've ever seen. I mean, I I really am running out of words to describe it. Now the opponent made it sweeter. I I'll I'll admit that. I said last week to you guys that I I was not worried about the Patriots as a team. The 2020 Patriots lining up with the 2020 Bills, I wasn't worried. The problem for me was all the 20 years of garbage that I had to deal with and the the scar tissue that I carry. My generation of Bills fans, has that I mean, Tom Brady is the Lord over us. For a different generation of Bills fans, I mean, it, it was a rivalry. You, you know, you had Jim Kelly versus Dan Marino, but the Bills got the better of them most of the time. But you knew you had a great foe, and you had John Elway in some matchups, an AFC championship game here. But for a generation of Bills fans, the, the generation that I'm in, last Saturday was a chance for us to get back everything that they had taken from us. Now, can we go back and reverse all the 20 years? Of course not. But boy, did it feel like it that night. And I know I can't be the only Bills fan who feels that way, regardless of generation. It felt like, you know what? You kicked our ass for 20 years, but it's okay. Because we got you tonight. Playoffs, prime time, everybody's watching, nowhere to hide. They had no answers for your Buffalo Bills. How awesome is that to even think about? How awesome is that to even talk about? One of the things I was talking to my best friend the other day about the game and One of the things that he said was like, we never let up off the gas and he enjoyed watching. He was like, this is my team. I can't believe this is my team. And I agree. How many years of that 17-year playoff drought did we have inept offenses? Offenses that couldn't get it done. Offenses that played like they were scared of their own shadow. You know you guys remember those offenses. The quarterbacks, the names, we can fill in the blanks another time. Last Saturday night was a cleansing for Bills fans. And I really do want to give kudos to Sean McDermott and his staff because I think they tapped into it. I think they understood the moment. I tell you guys at the end of the episodes to live in the moment, stay in the moment. I think they understood that, you know what, we can't make up for the 20 years. We weren't even here for the 20-year run for the Patriots. But what we can do tonight is let you enjoy yourselves. It's literally minus 7 degrees wind chill out here and and we were full throttle the entire game. I didn't have a voice until Wednesday. Part of the reason I couldn't do the podcast. I was feeling a little bit under the weather after I got back. I think it was from being outside so long and I wasn't used to it. But, I mean, we were full throttle. I didn't leave the stadium until it was over. Until the game was over. And, and really, to be honest, props to Bills fans because we didn't leave. The only people I really noticed leaving the game we're the Patriots fans. I look up at the scoreboard and it's 33 to 3. And I'm wondering what alternate universe am I in? And then once I'm looking around, fourth quarter starts, and you finally start seeing these 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 fans. 
I almost said something else, but these fans who paid their money, they came, they, they loved their team too. But they were finally tiptoeing their way out of there. And that was really, really, really fun to see. It was sweet. I posted a video on Instagram. Check it out. I mean, it, it was so sweet. It was sweet. Last Saturday was so sweet. Now, a cold report. I know I made a lot of it last week for you Bills fans that were listening to last week's episode, and I know it was really funny um, how nervous I was about it, and I was admittedly nervous. I'll be honest to you, hand to God, and you can ask uh, my buddy Deion Brown. You can catch him at Deion Brown on Instagram. He'll tell you. I didn't even notice um, that it was cold until the third quarter, straight up, and that's not a lie. Um, I literally yelled the entire time I was in there, Every single down, I was yelling on defense and smacking my hand on, on the front of my seat, to be honest with you. I didn't even notice it was cold. Um, I was well prepared for it. I definitely layered up. And I think that that was really the theme of it. It was cold, for sure. I def- My toes definitely got that got cold third quarter. My toes were freezing, for sure. I didn't have any warmers in them. Unfortunately, I had a bunch of socks on, but no warmers. But I, all the way up until the third quarter, I was fine. And even then, I was still fine because we were still kicking their butt, so it didn't matter. And I really didn't think about my toes that often. But uh, we layered up, and and I was fine, to be honest with you. So that's that's the report. If you prepared for it, if you were ready for it, if you layered up, you really were okay. It was, it was cold, though, but you you were okay. I mean, I, I, I'm not Fitz. I mean, you guys saw Fitz out there on Instagram and Twitter, shirtless. Now, he, I'll, I'll tell him at least this. He was underneath the that canopy, the heated canopy, so... You know, those guys have, a, you know, they have a little bit of an advantage, but still, I'd never take off my clothes. I don't know what he was thinking, <laughs> but, but he's like the gift that keeps giving for Bill's fans. I mean, we love Fitz, and that was really cool to see him out there. I wanted to say something about the defense once more. How about that Micah Hyde pick? <laughs> to gloss over it, I think, would be blasphemy. I remember I'm sitting in my seats, and we're... The touchdown is scored at the tunnel end zone is on the opposite end zone, on the scoreboard side, 104. I put my head down after Mac Jones threw the ball because I was sure that it was a touchdown. And I remember when I put my head down, I was like, okay, it's all, it's all right, 7-7. Seven, seven. Of course, it wasn't going to be easy. It's the Patriots. We expect that this is probably going to be a close game, 24-21 or something like that. And when I heard the roar, I remember not looking up immediately and I remember like, damn, there's a lot of Patriots fans in here that I didn't even notice. And I looked up and everybody's jumping around and I'm like, what, what happened? I, when I got home and I got a chance to watch that, just hats off to Micah Hyde. Um, what, what an amazing interception that was. That defensive play goes down as one of the best in Bill's history. It's one of the best secondary plays you're ever going to find on an interception. And you could put it up with Dion and Rod Woodson and all those greats, Ronnie Lott, any of the ball hawks, Ed Reed of the new generation, Troy Palomalo, any of those guys that went and got the ball and went and snatched that thing, Earl Thomas, man, Micah Hyde, all the different angles of that pick, man. Over the shoulder like like Hank Aaron. I mean, that that was sweet. I mean, that's I mean, I, I might have to change the episode name to sweet because that whole night was sweet. It really was sweet, and I really enjoyed it. Now, we'll keep it in context. I know that for a a separate generation of Bills fans, the ones that actually got a chance to experience the 90s Bills, I know that that's not better than 51-3. And I get that, and I understand that, and I'm not going to try to stand on any soapbox and try to say my game's better than yours or anything like that. Um, If I was an adult back in the 90s, 51-3, there would be nothing that would have topped that either. Those guys were there in the stadium full throttle for a chance to go to the Super Bowl for the first time in the history of the team. So we get it. 51-3 was amazing. And I'm, I'm sure that this game, whatever you dub it, I've heard it dubbed the perfect game or the the Boston TD party. Um, whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. Um, 51-3 is probably number one. And then this, <laughs> name number two, Bills fans. Also in the comments section, put it down. What What is the second best game if you would concede 51-3 to the older generation? If you concede that game, my generation, what do you guys think? What would be number two? I I can't think of another game. 